don't want wine. You can always have some milk. There used to be this charlatan in Colling. Lived in a house on the road to Brandy. He claimed he could read people's minds. Then this other charlatan came to town and settled on the other side of the river. And he said he could read minds too. And I was thinking, if them two met up and started reading each other's thoughts, then actually they'd be reading their own thoughts, right? See, because the other fella would be thinking, he'd be... Ugh. Ugh. Forget it. They left us some damn good booze here. And as my old man used to say, the fire of battle must be quenched. Of course, the only battle he was ever in was with Ma. But still, it fits. Anyway, I hope you'll drink with us. Sure. Why look a gift horse in the mouth? My words exactly. Me and the lads were just saying how we know nothing about you. Most of the folk around here have hardly been further than the village market. But you must have seen a thing or two. That I have. I suppose you heard about the raising of scallops. Aye, I heard. And Radzik told me you're from there. But that's probably not the kind of story to go with wine and good cheer. Have you heard of Sir Hans Capon? I heard his name mentioned in Colleen. In connection with some wench, as I recall. A young dandy, eh? Yeah, that's him. He's going to inherit Ratai once he comes of age. I run some errands for him now and again. Well, once we were at the bath together, and his lordship wanted to seduce one of the bathmaids. Naturally, that's what the baths are for, among other things. Yeah, but with Sir Hans, nothing is ever straightforward. First, I had to play strip dice. <laughs> that's good. Did you win? <laughs> I did, but I had to strip myself anyway to get into the tub. Only, no sooner had I done so, than his lordship demanded wine from the castle cellars, which is a long fucking way from there. I reckon you're a man who can't resist a challenge. <laughs> if I'd been sober. I went all the way there and back in my undergarments, and no sooner was I back than he sent me to pick flowers for the girl from the castle gardens. <laughs> it's starting to sound like a fairy tale with three wishes. Well, actually, he probably did have a third wish, but he didn't get a chance to say it. How's that? Well, I got back only to find the girl's sweetheart, some guard called Arson Balls, well, that's what Sir Hans called him, trying to drown him in the bath. <laughs> drown a nobleman over a wench. That's Balls, all right. Well, Sir Hans was naked and drunk, so he didn't look very noble. <laughs> anyway, I tackled this fella and saved Sir Hans from him. It could have all got out of hand, but it ended with only a few bruises. Sir Hans never got his way with the girl, though. All that trouble for nothing. <laughs> Tell us another. I was trying to track down these bandits who raided the Neuhof stud farm, and the trail led to Ujitz. I made the acquaintance of the parish priest there. Oh, I've heard some stories about him. Apparently he's quite a character. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. But he does keep his word, and he sure knows how to drink. A typical man of the cloth, eh? I don't know about other priests, but Godwin can booze like a master. So we ended up in the local tavern. What can I tell you? Wine, women and song, you know how it goes. Well, we lost track of time a little, and then the bailiff came barging in and tells us it's past curfew and we're to clear out. Was he on his own? No, he had some men with him. I'm not sure how many. It's all a little blurry. Anyway, we explained to him politely that we had no intention of ending our enjoyment. So, after a bit of discussion with the bailiff, we carried on. Next morning... <laughs> Godwin was as green as a frog and hardly able to walk. And then he realised he had to say mass. <laughs> That's a show I'd like to see. <laughs> well, he couldn't do it. So he got me to preach the sermon. You? Preaching? You're joking. <laughs> well, I did my best. Of course, I wasn't in great shape myself, so I'm not sure what the flock made of it. <laughs> my word, you're a dark horse. Tell us another.
Do you know Talmberg? Oh, yeah, I do. It's that castle on the hill, not far from here. That's right. Sir Divish is the lord there. You might have heard he was locked up in his own castle for seven years by another lord he had some dispute with. I remember hearing something about that. How did he get out? His wife, Lady Stephanie, managed to get justice for him in the end, with the help of the provincial council. Right. But I thought you were going to tell us something about yourself, Henry. I'm getting there. It's to do with the young Lady Stephanie. She took a liking to me and asked me to help her get some things for her cousin's wedding, which I did. And she was very, very grateful. So the lady was nice to you. That's a charming story. Not exactly bard material. No, you don't get it, Kuno. She was very grateful. What are you... No. Never. You and the lady of the castle. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a surprise for me, too. Are you mad? Did it cross your mind what her husband could do? No, I suppose. But I was caught up in the moment. Jesus, Henry. Let me give you a word of advice. We're not from here, so it doesn't matter much. But I wouldn't go telling that story around these parts. Of course not. Don't worry. A nice story, but let's just drink. 